At a time when most Wall Street firms had stopped doing business with Donald Trump, a single bank lent him more than $2.5 billion. The bank that kept saying yes to Trump is none other than Deutsche Bank. Despite repeated red flags over two decades, Deutsche Bank lent Donald Trump more than $2 billion, becoming the president's biggest creditor, and a bearer of his financial secrets. Now a whistleblower is telling the FBI that Trump Deutsche Bank loans were underwritten by Russian state-owned bank. The name of the whistleblower is Val Broksmit, and his full statement is below, quote. The Russian state bank VTB underwrote loans to Donald Trump via Deutsche Bank. Over the course of Trump's relationship with DB, an inordinate amount of questionable, mismanaged and risky loans approved by Deutsche Bank to Trump required his personal guarantee, which, over time, also lost its value. Trump's team at DB sought out creative ways to circumvent the varied protections DB's compliance team institutionally implemented, and whether by happenstance or by design, Trump's loans became underwritten by Russia's own VTB. I informed the FBI of this in 2019, end of quote. Val first contacted the DOJ in spring 2016, stating, I'm writing in hopes of speaking to someone at the DOJ in reference to the evidence I have showing major fraud at one of the world's largest banks. More than two years later, Val got a response from the FBI, who immediately flew agents from New York to meet Val in Los Angeles in order to discuss his Deutsche Bank knowledge. The FBI officials are conducting an ongoing money laundering investigation into Deutsche Bank. As the bank kept writing checks even after Trump defaulted on loans worth hundreds of millions and sued it. Now congressional investigators are going to court to uncover the financial records behind their strange relationship. Since Trump's election as president, his ties to Russia have become the focus of ardent scrutiny, most of which has centered on whether his inner circle colluded with Russia to subvert the U.S. election. A growing chorus in Congress is also asking pointed questions about how the president built his business empire. Rep. Adam Schiff, the ranking Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, has called for a more in-depth inquiry into Russian investment in Trump's businesses and properties. During the 80s and 90s, the U.S. government time and again saw a pattern by which Russian criminals would use condos and high-rises to launder money. It didn't matter that they paid too much because the real estate values would go up anyway, and it was a way of turning dirty money into clean money. It was done very methodically, and it explained why there are so many high-rises where the units were sold, but no one is living in them. The Russian mobsters were starting to invest in high-end real estate, which offered an ideal vehicle to launder money from their criminal activities. David K. Johnston reported in his book, The Making of Donald Trump, that when Trump Tower was built, it was only the second high-rise in New York that accepted anonymous buyers. Ever since Trump won the Republican nomination, the majority of his real estate sales during the last years were to anonymous shell companies. Profits from sales of those properties flow through a trust run by Trump's sons. The president is the sole beneficiary of the trust and can withdraw cash at any time. The increasing share of opaque buyers comes at a time when federal investigators, members of Congress, and ethics watchdogs are asking questions about Trump's sales and customers in the U.S. and around the world. The exceptionally troubled recent history of the German bank, its past money laundering troubles, and the bank's stunning relationship with Trump, are the subjects of today's video. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. That Kremlin-linked entity invested significantly in Trump's properties over the years is not inherently nefarious. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, wealthy Russians have invested heavily in real estate in the West, while Americans were, in turn, encouraged to invest in Russia. However, in the context of a president under several investigations for his connections to the Kremlin, Russia's outsized role in Trump's re-emergence from financial tribulations that nearly destroyed his real estate empire merit additional attention. What emerges is the story of a man indebted to Russia through the oligarchs that President Vladimir Putin helped create and now controls. Upon taking office, Trump superficially distanced himself from the Trump Organization, ceding day-to-day -day control to his sons Donald Trump Jr. and Eric Trump. However, he still owns and profits from the company, which gives him an ongoing stake in maintaining the relationships that make his company profitable and leaked internal emails suggest that he actually retains more control over the Trump Organization's operations than he publicly acknowledges. 
Moreover, the relationships and transactions described below occurred long before his political career, at a time when both internal and external sources have described him as exerting almost unilateral control over the organization. Between 2012 and 2016, Trump borrowed more than $620 million from Deutsche Bank and another lender called Ladder Capital, where the son of the Trump Organization's longtime CFO was a top loan executive, to finance projects in Manhattan, Chicago, Washington, and a Miami suburb. Of that total, the Trump Org received $282 million from Ladder for four Manhattan properties. Deutsche Bank's private wealth unit loaned Trump $48 million, after he had defaulted on his $640 million loans and the bank's commercial unit didn't want to lend him any further funds, so that Trump could pay back another unit of Deutsche Bank. No one has ever seen anything like this before. Deutsche Bank loaned Trump's company $125 million as part of the overall $150 million purchase of the ailing Doral Golf Resort in Miami in 2012. The loan's primary collateral was land and buildings that he paid only $105 million for, county land records show. The apparently favorable terms raise questions about whether the bank's loan was unusually risky. Over the past two decades, Deutsche Bank loaned a cumulative total of around $2.5 billion to Trump projects, and the bank kept writing him nine-figure checks even after he defaulted on a $640 million obligation and sued the bank, reproaching it for his failure to pay back the debt. Trump's relationship with Deutsche Bank goes back 30 years and includes successes, failures, and multiple lawsuits between the two. Trump received over $2 billion in loans from the bank and used the money to build golf courses and high-rises, selling a large portion of real estate to secretive LLCs and Russian mobsters. In 2008, Trump sued Deutsche Bank after he was unable to make a payment on a $640 million loan he had received for Trump Tower Chicago. His claim was that he should be absolved from payment because Deutsche Bank helped cause the 2008 financial crash. Trump ultimately lost the case, which was resolved by both parties agreeing to settle for an undisclosed sum, Trump was required to pay. In order to do so, he turned to yet another division of Deutsche Bank DBTCA and asked for another loan to pay off the first loan, which he also owed to Deutsche Bank. DBTCA agreed, an arrangement characterized as unheard of by financial experts, according to the Times. Senior bank officials were later surprised to learn of the depth of the Trump-Deutsche Bank relationship and were baffled that Trump was mostly debt-free. Documents provided to Forensic News by Val confirm that Trump obtained at least some loans through DBTCA, not the main Deutsche Bank office. A bank spokesperson denied that Trump's loans were connected to VTB, telling Forensic News that more responsible news outlets have either investigated and avoided or retracted similar allegations as there is no truth to them. They did not comment on possible sanctions violations or other Deutsche Bank connections to VTB. The relationship between Trump and the controversial German bank is also littered with unorthodox financial agreements. In 2010, Rosemary Verablik, an executive in the DBTCA division of the bank who worked with Trump and Kushner, approved a $106 million loan to purchase the Trump Doral Resort in Florida despite an internal banking team's estimation that Trump was overvaluing his assets by as much as 70%. The bank approved a separate loan for $19 million to fund the Doral transaction even though the original loan was more than enough to cover the Doral's price tag of $105 million. Trump also purchased a 60-year lease to develop the Washington, D.C. Old Post Office into a hotel in 2013 primarily using a loan approved by Ms. Verablik, despite the fact DBTCA did not usually finance real estate transactions. At the same time that Deutsche Bank was lending large amounts of money to Trump, regulators were investigating the bank for allegedly laundering vast sums of illicit Russian cash. In 2017, DBTCA was fined $425 million by the New York State Department of Financial Services as part of a mirror trading scheme out of Moscow. The department said Deutsche was moving money out of Russia by using a stock mirror trading strategy, in which its London branch would sell a trade that the Moscow branch bought earlier in the day. The bank was identified in 2019 as a central part of another Russian money laundering scheme designed to benefit Russian oligarchs. The $20 billion scheme involved a series of fake loans in the UK from 2010 to 2014. 
Deutsche Bank was used to launder the money via its corresponding banking network, effectively allowing illegal Russian payments to be funneled to the US, the European Union, and Asia, The Guardian reported. VTB and DBTCA. Forensic News also obtained emails, documents, banking records, and other communications from Val and others showing a closer relationship between VTB and DBTCA than previously reported. Additionally, a separate set of documents from companies with business in Russia indicates that DBTCA acted as a correspondent bank and intermediary bank for VTB24 a former subsidiary of VTB, even after sanctions were implemented in 2014. A correspondent bank is one established by a banking institution to receive deposits from or make payments on behalf of another, usually foreign, financial institution. DBTCA acting as a correspondent bank for a VTB subsidiary post-2014 may have been a violation of U.S. sanctions, according to experts. One document, included in the recent 29 leaks cache of files, shows a UK-based company stating that DBTCA was the correspondent bank for VTB24. The leaked document is a letter from a principal, Ayub Khan, in the company, Quantum Business Partners Limited, attempting to make payments totaling $73,000 to a Russian company account. I understand that the VTB Bank funds are currently held in the correspondent bank account in New York, the man writes. The bank in question is DBTCA. Now, a Deutsche Bank whistleblower has come forward with explosive details about those Trump loans that nobody could figure out why Deutsche would loan money to Donnie Don't Pay Trump. According to Forensic News, Trump's loans from Deutsche Bank were underwritten by a Russian state-owned bank. That news reportedly comes from a whistleblower with access to documents from both Deutsche Bank and Russia's state-owned VTB Bank. VTB Bank was also the proposed lender on the never-completed Trump Tower Moscow project. The question of why Deutsche Bank would extend a series of huge loans to Trump has been dangling since before he ever announced his candidacy for president on a golden escalator ride. When Trump first went to Deutsche Bank, he was worse than broke. He had just finished bankrupting multiple casinos in New Jersey and then had convinced investors to back a takeover of those casinos at a fraction of the original value. Then Trump deliberately allowed the investment group to go bankrupt so he could grab the whole deal himself at a fraction of what his investors had paid. Then he went bankrupt. Again. And along the way, he was socked with a massive fine for money laundering at his now bankrupt, again, casino. Trump was so fiscally radioactive that no American bank would let him in the door. But Deutsche Bank turned around and gifted Trump with loans that gave him a fresh start and an apparent miracle turnaround of his New York real estate empire. Those loans have always been the subject of head scratching over just what Deutsche Bank could have been thinking. But if forensic news is right, what Deutsche Bank was considering was that it wasn't risking a damn thing, because the Russian government was actually vouching for Trump through VTB Bank. If Trump didn't come through, Vladimir Putin was offering to make it good. The documents supposedly originated with the son of a former Deutsche Bank official who committed suicide, which is very much the kind of connection that raises concerns about the authenticity of the information. This only highlights the importance of efforts by Congress to gain access to information on these loans. The last appeals court ruling in the case instructed Deutsche Bank to turn over the information, but the Supreme Court stepped in to block the subpoena and hear the case. Trump lost the fight against the congressional subpoena at the district level and in two appeals, with all judges decisively siding with Congress's authority to request the records. That the Supreme Court agreed to hear the case is very unusual, both because there was no conflict among rulings by lower courts and because the Supreme Court tends to avoid most cases involving a conflict between the executive and legislative branches. Much of Trump's recovery depended on selling apartments and buildings to Russian oligarchs at far above market prices. Those deals have always suggested the same kind of money laundering that added to the conviction of Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort, but if these accusations are accurate, Russia did far more for Trump than buy his gilded condos. If they are correct, this will show that Donald Trump was 100% dependent on the Russian government for his big comeback. It would mean that he was completely beholden to Putin for his real estate, for his golf courses, for his candidacy, for everything. So Deutsche Bank's loans to Donald Trump were underwritten by Russian state-owned VTB Bank, as reported by the whistleblower whose collection of thousands of bank documents and internal communications have caught the recent attention of federal investigators. 
Not to forget that Justice Anthony Kennedy's son was a prime player in granting Deutsche Bank loans to Trump, and Kennedy's son might be implicated in the laundering. So the question is what the hell is wrong with the laws in this banana republic country? If you or I had done one one thousandth of what Trump has proven to have done thus far, Manafort, Cohen payoffs, obstruction of justice, etc., we would be in an 8x8 cell serving decades at Leavenworth. We have a president playing golf in Mar-a-Lago while his attorney, who is on prison for acts committed at the direction of Trump serving a three-year prison sentence. Over 100 businesses. Four declared bankruptcy, reorganized, and continued operation with people collecting paychecks, bondholders taking stock in lieu of bonds, and getting more out than they put in. Went from the personal wealth of $1 billion to outright, debt-free ownership of buildings worth billions and no-risk licensing royalties worth hundreds of millions per year. Huge success at everything he turned his hand to, real estate development, book writing, politics, managing a $21 trillion economy. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.